Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. DNC chair just accused Hillary of stealing money to fund her campaign. They found it all. As more time passes since the 2016 presidential election, the more shenanigans are revealed on the part of the Democratic National Committee in an effort to rig the election in favor of Hillary Clinton. Former interim DNC chairwoman Donna Brazow continues to drop bombshells in an effort to put as much distance between herself and the Clintons as possible. Perhaps it is merely an insurance policy of sorts to prevent herself from being added to the Clinton body count or perhaps she has finally had an attack of conscience. Maybe she is attempting to deflect blame from herself for her own poor decisions, either way, the revelations are truly astounding. Brazil began sounding the alarm last year on former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign, claiming Hillary took money from state parties to fund her second failed presidential campaign. Brazil revealed in an op-ed published in Politico magazine that the DNC was broken in serious debt all courtesy of former President Barack Obama. Brazil wrote in her op-ed, Obama left the party $24 million in debt. $15 million in bank debt and more than $8 million owed to vendors after the 2012 campaign, and had been paying that off very slowly. Brazile then revealed that Hillary's campaign fund known as Hillary for America, as well as the Hillary Victory Fund, a fundraising organization that worked hand-in-hand -hand with the DNC had taken care of 80 percent of the remaining debt in 2016, about $10 million, and had placed the party on an allowance. According to Brazile's own testimony, she states, the Saturday morning after the convention in July, I called Gary Gensler, the chief financial officer of Hillary's campaign. He wasted no words. He told me the Democratic Party was broken $2 million in debt. What? I screamed. I am an officer of the party and they've been telling us everything is fine and they were raising money with no problems. That wasn't true, he said. Officials from Hillary's campaign had taken a look at the DNC's books. Obama left the party $24 million in debt. $15 million in bank debt and more than $8 million owed to vendors after the 2012 campaign and had been paying that off very slowly. Obama's campaign was not scheduled to pay it off until 2016. Hillary for America, the campaign, and the Hillary Victory Fund, its joint fundraising vehicle with the DNC, had taken care of 80% of the remaining debt in 2016, about $10 million, and had placed the party on an allowance. If I didn't know about this, I assumed that none of the other officers knew about it either. That was just Debbie's way. In my experience, she didn't come to the officers of the DNC for advice and counsel. She seemed to make decisions on her own and let us know at the last minute what she had decided, as she had done when she told us about the hacking only minutes before the Washington Post broke the news. On the phone, Gary told me the DNC had needed a $2 million loan, which the campaign had arranged. No. That can't be true. I said. The party cannot take out a loan without the unanimous agreement of all of the officers. Gary, how did they do this without me knowing? I asked. I don't know how Debbie relates to the officers, Gary said. He described the party as fully under the control of Hillary's campaign, which seemed to confirm the suspicions of the Bernie camp. The campaign had the DNC on life support, giving it money every month to meet its basic expenses, while the campaign was using the party as a fundraising clearinghouse. Under FEC law, an individual can contribute a maximum of $2,700 directly to a presidential campaign. But the limits are much higher for contributions to state parties and a party's national committee. Individuals who had maxed out their $2,700 contribution limit to the campaign could write an additional check for $353,400 to the Hillary Victory Fund, that figure represented $10,000 to each of the 32 states' parties who were part of the Victory Fund agreement. $320,000, and $33,400 to the DNC. The money would be deposited in the states first, and transferred to the DNC shortly after that. Money in the battleground states usually stayed in that state, but all the other states funneled that money directly to the DNC, which quickly transferred the money to Brooklyn. Wait, I said. That victory fund was supposed to be for whoever was the nominee, and the state party races. You're telling me that Hillary has been controlling it since before she got the nomination? Gary said the campaign had to do it or the party would collapse. That was the deal that Robbie struck with Debbie, he explained, referring to campaign manager Robbie Mook. It was to sustain the DNC. We sent the party nearly $20 million from September until the convention, and more to prepare for the election. What's the burn rate, Gary? I asked. How much money do we need every month to fund the party? 
The burn rate was $3.5 million to $4 million a month, he said. I gasped. I had a pretty good sense of the DNC's operations after having served as interim chair five years earlier. Back then the monthly expenses were half that. What had happened? The party chair usually shrinks the staff between presidential election campaigns, but Debbie had chosen not to do that. She had stuck lots of consultants on the DNC payroll, and Obama's consultants were being financed by the DNC, too. When we hung up, I was livid. Not at Gary, but at this mess, I had inherited. I knew that Debbie had outsourced a lot of the management of the party and had not been the greatest at fundraising. I would not be that kind of chair, even if I was only an interim chair. Did they think I would just be a surrogate for them, get on the road and rouse up the crowds? I was going to manage this party the best I could and try to make it better, even if Brooklyn did not like this. It would be weeks before I would fully understand the financial shenanigans that were keeping the party on life support. Brazile went on to reveal her belief that the Democratic Party establishment installed her as the head of the DNC with the expectation she would simply be an obedient stooge who would turn a blind eye to the endemic corruption and mismanagement inside the DNC. Yet, she states she had no intention of keeping quiet when she discovered that Obama's negligence had left the party in debt, effectively allowing Hillary to play a deciding role in doling out resources, setting strategy, and effectively allowing Hillary a foothold in her attempts to rig the 2016 presidential election. Yet she still lost to current President Donald Trump and nearly two years later, she's still not over it. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.